Hi everybody, um, I hope you're all very well. We're going to continue with our story, um, The Other Side of Truth. Uh, just a quick recap before we go on. We've left uh, Femi and Sade on the aeroplane on their way to London with Mrs Bancoli, who they don't know, and they're hoping to find their uncle Delhi on the other side. So, let's see, we're up to Chapter 6, Flight. Are your children all right? The blue button eyes of the air hostess startled Sade. They darted between the children and Mrs Bancoli. Neither Sade nor Femi had touched anything on the plastic trays of food. Thank you, they're just tired. Mrs Bancoli and the air hostess smiled at each other. Sade and Femi remained silent. On a screen above them, a tiny stick insect plane perched over a map of Africa, pointing northwards over the Sahara. A loudspeaker voice gave details of how high, far, and fast they were travelling. Every hour that little black fly thing would show them being carried more and more hundreds of miles away from home. Sade pulled down the window shutter, then closed her eyes, trying to shut everything out. But there was no escape from the heavy, steady booming of the engines as she fell in and out of fitful bouts of sleep. At one point, Mama was squeezing the children's hands as she led them along a deep forest path. Slits of light filtered through the spiked leaves of giant palms, but when they came to a clearing and Sade looked up at Mama, she found herself looking at an unknown woman's face. Another time, Sade was struggling to stay close to Mama among the crowd streaming through the narrow alleys of Alade Market. Mama picked up a small saucer of buttons and was holding up a dazzling blue saucer button to the light, asking, Will this colour do? Sade stretched out her hand to take the button, but the whole saucer was sent flying as some men in white robes suddenly pushed past them. Sade woke up, clutching her fist, straining against the seatbelt. The cold air had crept under her blanket, through her thin sweater and jeans. Apart from the deep droning of the engines, there were no other sounds. All the cabin lights were dimmed. Femi was curled up like a bundle underneath his blanket. Sade couldn't tell if he was actually asleep but Mrs Bancolo certainly was, judging from her snores. Sade shut her eyes again, trying to doze. But the whale-like monster that had swallowed them continued to roar as it winged its way over the earth. There was nothing they could do. Mama couldn't do anything, lying on the ground covered in a white sheet stained with crimson, and Papa couldn't do anything, kneeling next to her crying. In the morning, when they opened the window shutter, the sky outside was streaked with the colours of the rainbow, one minute it was shaded dark indigo go blue to creamy white, the next minute milky blue stretched towards a horizon of oranges and reds. Seconds later, all they could see were mountains and valleys of fluffy white clouds. Maybe it's like snow, Femi whispered. Cotton wool, Sade murmured. For a short while they were absorbed in the strange sky outside until the air hostess arrived with more trays of food. Sade felt little cramps in her stomach but this time both she and Femi opened and sampled the parcels of food. Their last proper meal was one Mama had made for them. The plane began to descend through clouds, revealing patchworks of fields from lime greens to chocolate browns. But the colours seemed drained of brightness, and soon even those were lost in a hazy mist. When it lifted, it was as if a wizard had changed the fields into thousands upon thousands of buildings as far as the eye could see. Everything seemed tinged with grey ash, so this was London, and Uncle Delhi must be down there, waiting for them. Far below them, a river curled through the city like a giant brown python, swollen from overeating. Temperature in London today is 8 degrees Celsius. Perhaps Uncle Delhi would bring something warm for them to wear. Their cotton coats would certainly not be enough. Sade shivered. <laughs>